All right, so that's our show for today. Thank you so much, Georgian. Um, I said more. Yeah, that's how I was like, sorry, <laughs> we should stop that. So more. All right, here we go. <laughs> What's up, world? It's your boy Q Jefferson here, and today I'm sitting down with the legendary Olympian, Georgian Moline. How are you doing today? I'm good, how are you? Good, good, good. So I wanted to get you on the show just to talk about, like, the experiences of obviously just growing up and then turning into a, a, an Olympian and then like life after that, like just kind of breaking down what is going on in your, in your world. And you're somebody that just like truly inspires me and inspires oh. <laughs> other people around you. So it's like, this is my shot to get you here <laughs> and I get to ask you whatever I want and uh, hopefully just be able to send a message to people out there that watch this. That's like, I was a normal person, you know what I'm yeah. saying, with normal dreams. And I just happened to be the person that was able to go get it. And uh, I think there's somebody that can watch this that has a dream and has all the potential to go out and get it. And maybe we can unlock some uh, secrets and some open some doors for them to get there. Yeah, definitely. Think? No, I agree. I'm ready. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Um, so we'll get down into these questions. Where are you from? So originally, I'm from uh, Missoula, Montana. Okay. <laughs> People are like, where is that at? <laughs> um, but yeah, I moved to Phoenix when I was four years old. So I uh, lived here in Arizona ever since and then moved to Tucson for college and still, you know, living here in training. <laughs> okay, okay. What was like the first thing you got, like that you did when you got to Tucson? Like, did you eat? Did you go out to see something? Or did you just like check in right at the U of A? Like, tell me a little about that first day here. Yeah, so the first day in Tucson, I was just so homesick. <laughs> I'm like two hours away, but I missed my mom so much because we're really close. And um, I just, you know, the first thing I did, I think, was actually a pool party. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, so when you come to the U of A, oh, everyone's yeah. like, pool party. I'm like, all right, oh, I yeah. can meet friends. Um, it'll be a way to just get out and do something. So, okay. yeah, I think a pool party is the first thing. Excellent. Yeah. Um, so you came here and you started running track, and that's probably where, like, life started to kind of really take off. Um, did you have any, like, successes in high school or middle school or something like that that actually gave you the exposure to, like, yeah. get here? Yeah, so track for me started in high school, and it was all—it was actually for the social aspect okay. because I wanted to make friends. I was kind of really shy and awkward, and so for me, I joined track because everyone makes the team. You know, like how easy <laughs> is that? Too. Like yeah, everyone yeah, makes yeah, a team, yeah. and then um, so yeah. But I actually I started hurdles because my coach was like, "Hey, you're tall," and he tried to recruit everyone for <laughs> hurdles because no one wanted to do it. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay. I'll do it, why not? And then it actually turned into, you know, I did pretty well my first year, made it to state. Hey. Um, by my junior year, I had one state in the 100 hurdles and the 300 hurdles. Love and then it. my senior year, I uh, defended my title. So I have four state titles. Love and it. yeah, I mean, it was no good. High school was good. Yeah, no big deal. <laughs> okay. And so you get here to U of A, um, you check in. What's your coach's name? Who's that? Fred Harvey. Fred Harvey, okay. <laughs> a legendary name in Tucson, especially yeah. when it comes to track and field. And just being an overall really good guy, right? Oh, he's awesome. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. he's like a That's dad. All I've ever heard. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> you get here and you start to train. Are you like obviously you're homesick, but are you like, man, yeah. this is the place that can make me into something greater, or did, was it a mistake? No, definitely for me, I think I actually coming in, I, I never really ate healthy. Um, I I kind of got away with a lot of things in high school because of my talent and talented, my hard yeah. work. Right, right. But right. really, it was a lot of talent. And so when I came to college, I, I came into workouts and it was like the worst thing of my life. Right. It really was. I, I would cry to my mom and I'm like, maybe this isn't for me. I'm like every rep that we do of, I mean, anything, whether it was like crunches. I mean, I'm the last one. I can't oh, keep up with yeah, everyone yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it was, it was definitely a struggle. Okay, but, I see. But, um, yeah. That's evolved so much as far as like my diet and yeah, we'll sure. get into that. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, um, take it. It's like set the tone, set the, set the scene. It's your first race. At, you've got Arizona across your chest, right? It's your first race. Where are you at? How are you feeling? What's the event? And then what happened? Did you win? Like, tell me about that. So yeah, so it was actually indoor season. Kay. So you don't run the 400 hurdles indoor. They don't have it. So you do the open four and the 200 and it was just kind of like 
To be honest, I think my first year was more, I didn't really take track too seriously. It was more of like the social aspect, the partying. I mean, you get, you, you <laughs> so, know, you're away yeah, from yeah, home yeah, yeah. and you Absolutely. are trying to juggle so many things. So for me, but I did feel a sense of pride. I was like, wow, you know, like I'm at a D1 school on a scholarship. My mom could never pay for school. So for right. me, this was huge. And yeah. so, um, yeah, it was a good indoor season, but then literally right at that indoor season in March, right after, uh, I got injured. Oh, wow. And then so my first, like, right before my first meet, before I was going to do the um, 400 meter hurdles, I couldn't. I had to watch everyone else do it. And ah. I think that kind of lit a fire underneath yeah, me for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you, you hurt yourself. You're coming back. Like, let's, let's, what's the race that, like, really set it off for you? There had to be, like, a race where maybe you beat the girl that was, like, favored or <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what the story yeah. is. But what was the time where people were like, Yep, she's gonna be a big deal. So it's actually a really funny thing. So there was this girl in high school, and she was my rival. I mean, she had barely beaten me at like state and everything, and she went to ASU. Okay. And so I'd always just wanted to beat her, even in By the way, anybody <laughs> that doesn't know the rivalry between U of A and it's ASU, intense. right? University of Arizona is where we live, Tucson. And then ASU, I don't know where they're at. They're just somewhere, somewhere. up there. Yeah. Uh, but that's Arizona State <laughs> University. So this is a big deal. Yeah, it's All a right. huge deal. All right, and continue. Give me more. <laughs> so my coach is like, uh, I was like, coach, like, um, I just want to beat her. I, mean, I don't know. I shouldn't say her name. <laughs> Should I? <laughs> say her name. <laughs> no, her name's Jasmine. And Jasmine. it actually is a compliment to her because I just wanted to be like her. Like, I wanted yeah, to look yeah, yeah, like yeah. her. She was just built. And I, I, I was not like that at all. Sure. So. So anyways, I was like, coach, like, I just, you know, I want to get her. And he's like, oh, one day he's like, you'll beat her. And when you do, she'll never beat you again. And oh, I was man. like, oh, really? I was like, yeah, right. Like, she's always beaten me. And sure. he was right. Like, we, <laughs> we have a race. And um, it was Where like was my at? second year, my sophomore year. Okay. Um, it was at, I think, Mount Sac. Okay. Mount Sac. And I had beaten her in the 400 hurdles. And she had never beaten me again. And Ooh. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Jasmine. You know what I'm saying? No, she's, I mean, she's an amazing athlete. Yeah, like, yeah, I just yeah, always yeah. looked up to her for sure. Okay, okay, <laughs> excellent. So we're making our way through college. We're beating the Jasmines. We're doing all that <laughs> stuff, right? Um, obviously, there's life after or outside of college and high school track, and that is different invitationals, different things, and the Olympics, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm like, there's, there's really like the number one goal of any type of athlete if there's an event, and that is the Olympics. And man, I am so excited to talk to you about these Olympics because in my head, that's like, you guys are aliens. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. people, I was, I was an athlete, and I was a good athlete. But for me to talk about even making it anywhere near the Olympics is a laughing stock, right? Like, so yeah, when I think about getting to 2012, yep. London, <laughs> if I was there, I would really feel like I just got off of like the plane at Avatar, like the movie Avatar, <laughs> you feel like, like that <laughs> looking at all of these people and just knowing like these are the best of the best of the best in the world. Was that really humbling for you? Like, did you believe you were there? Like, no. <laughs> I, I just want you to just go. Tell me about the Olympics. Go. Yeah, so I think hmm, leading up into the Olympics and even the Olympic Games and after the Olympics, it never really sunk in. I think when it finally sunk in is when I, so I was a junior when I had made the team. So mm -hmm. going back my senior year, back to the U of A, back to school, because I had to finish, you know, to right. get my degree, right. people are like, Georgian? And I'm like, what? Uh, who's calling my name? Like, oh, no one wow. knows me here. And then yeah. they're like, are you the Olympian? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Like, I made the Olympics. But it was so weird for me because I was like, I'm trying to hide myself. I'm like, sure. uh. But then that's when it hit me. I was like, yeah, I guess I did make it to the Olympics. But to be honest, like, everything leading into that, it was just, it's just so crazy from my freshman year to like my junior year from yeah. getting injured. I got injured the year of the Olympics, and that was my indoor season. So I had to sit out my indoor season. Right. And um, my coach is like, hey, you just trust in you and you trust in me and we're going to be good. And I'm like, OK, right. I got you, coach. And that's when my diet started to change a lot. He's like, you need to focus on the things that you have control over. Sure. That is your sleep. That is your diet. That is how hard you work. That is your recovery. What a coach. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so for me, I was like, all right. And I was, you better believe I was in bed like 9, 30, 10 o'clock every single night. I don't care if it was a Saturday. I don't care what day it was. Right. I was in bed. 
um, I started to just eat really lean meats, you know, fish and chicken and red meat once a week at least, yeah. um, vegetables, those types of things. And then I just started seeing like, like the Olympics. I was like, I gotta see, you know. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. <laughs> but before that, the greatest thing was like, um, <clears throat> after my injury, I had, um, you know, I had outdoor season, and I, the first thing I was looking for was I want to be a national champion. That right. was my goal. That's all I like. That's what I wanted so badly. And I was undefeated the entire year, and I was a favorite to win nationals. Wild. And I get to nationals, and I'm running. I'm running so fast. The race of my life, and I fall on hurdle eight. <sighs> on my face, I get up. I finish the race, obviously last place. Oh. Um, and I just start crying. All my competitors are hugging me. They're so sweet. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> But um, that was the greatest, one of the greatest things that happened to me because yeah. I was like, oh, I'm not ending my season like this. This sure. is not happening. And then um, less than a month later, you know, I started to zone back in what I need to do. Uh, I just saw myself winning the Olympic trials, knowing yeah. that who I had to go up against didn't matter to me. Right. And um, so anyways, I go to the Olympic trials. You go through three rounds, a prelim, semi, and a final. Right. Made it to the final, took second place, and uh, punched my ticket to London. I love it. One of the greatest things about the Olympics was the opening ceremonies. Yeah. Because that's where you get to represent your country, and you get to, like, I mean, how cool is that? I'm not representing, like, not just Arizona and sure. my family and my friends and the people who have believed in me, but my, my country. You know, yeah. and I come from a background oh, of, like, I Marines. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, all my Marine, like, you know family I mean they're just proud yeah. and it, what's the coolest thing is like you see Kobe and <laughs> you see LeBron and you see all these people and you're like oh we're like here together <laughs> like you know I, I don't know it was really really awesome yeah um and I th yeah I think that was like the greatest moment of the Olympics obviously competing was so fun sure. making the final I was the youngest in the final that was really cool yeah but um I think just being able to represent my country yeah. and walk out you know I love it was that. awesome yeah I love that okay <laughs> Does that feel like a normal race? Like It does. Yeah. It did because for me at that time, before I started putting all this pressure on myself after the Olympics, um, mm -hmm. at the Olympics I had no pressure on me. No one really expected me to make the team. Right. I mean, who was I? I just had like a great year and like where everything fell together, where I was healthy and sure. able to really show the world what I could do. Right. Um, but there was no pressure for me. I mean, people were like, oh. I mean, you know, if I make the final, great. But if yeah. I don't, no one expected me to. Right, so, right, right. yeah, it really did feel like any other race, just with yeah. like a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> That's Lots amazing. Of people. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I like that you talk about all of the trials and tribulations, like the setbacks, yeah. the the month wait, the <laughs> over months and months and months waiting, the getting injured before Rio, like yeah. those types of things really do happen. You know what I'm saying? So when you get to the Olympics, those are people where the stars really did align, mm -hmm. right? Where they're very patient, where they <laughs> oh, yeah. fought back their whole life, not even oh, just yeah. the season, but their whole life to get there. And I just think that is very honorable of you and like just amazing. When I see that in somebody, like the comeback story, the the drive, I get to look back and be like, I just own a gym in Tucson, Arizona. This is very modest, but the fire that's in me, I swear, oh, yeah. <laughs> is the same fire that's in you. And I love totally. that because for a moment, I get to be like an Olympian. You yeah. know what I'm saying? When I lace my shoes up in the morning to do my thing, it's the same way you're lacing your shoes up to do your mm -hmm. thing. And I just really love the message that you put out oh. because there's other people that, they, they might be going to basketball, practice they might be going to play chess they might be doing anything and they get to look at your instagram they get to hear your story and it's just like if that same fire lives in them i really think that you can unlock it in them and then they just get to go see their olympics whatever that is yeah because you know? um, success for everyone looks so different and so many people look at what i do and they're like wow like i just went to my 10-year high school reunion and they were like yeah. wow you must be the most successful person i'm like no like right. there's a guy that i went to school with who's like a pilot and he's like 28 years old and right. i think that is so amazing so many people like they want to be moms and have families and that's a hard job and right. so 
a job that Success like is wouldn't just you different. Like, if I was a kid like yeah or if I had kids I, would, I feel like I would fail that you know what I'm saying like <laughs> oh, people, yeah, are, people see the stuff that's going on around me and they're like wow yeah exactly. and I'm like yo you got two kids and they're still alive yeah like, like wow you have you have to take care of two <laughs> yeah, like living yeah, yeah. things that's, this a, is that's hard. amazing so, so yeah I think that's it just good. looks different for everyone so talk to us about that like how how do you stay motivated from going to the Olympics to getting yourself out of debt to like whatever the destination is there's going to be a journey. That journey is going to be effed up. Yeah. You, you just get tossed oh, around. Yeah. How do you stay in the fight? <laughs> How do you stay in the fight? I think there's a lot of things. I mean, for me, my mom is my motivation. Yeah. I mean, when we first came What's to Arizona. What's your name? Carrie. Carrie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's a fifth grade teacher. When we first <laughs> came to Arizona, um, my, we lived in our car for four months, and my mom's trying to like make a living for me you know she could care less about herself but she does everything for me and so um my mom always worked nine to five like two to three jobs I mean and then at 40 went back to college because she's like I want to have a career that my daughter's proud of sure I'm always proud of her but anyways like she went back she's like I'm gonna be a teacher that's like a real career you know and that's what she wanted to do and so she went back at the age of 40 and she's a fifth grade teacher and she's the strongest woman I know she's the greatest person I know so anyways my mom when I first signed with Nike out of college, um, I bought her a house and it was like the greatest thing ever. And one day I hope to pay off that house and, and take care of her financially so she doesn't so have to amazing. worry. You know, that's yeah. my motivation as my mom. But sure. what also motivates me is like just my passion for track. Like track isn't just because it's a sport and that's why I love it. It's taught me so much about life. Right. It's made me the strong, resilient person that I am today that I've always wanted to be. I've been through so much yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's just, it's made me into a person that I actually love, you yeah. know, because for a while I struggled with finding my worth and things sure. like that. So yeah, those are my two motivations. I love that. That's good. <laughs> yeah. What is one area in your life that you're not good at? Like you just, <laughs> oh, there's a lot. <laughs> yeah, just give me one. Like, um, I, I, I think just people see like people that have a success in one area of their life and they just assume that oh, we just totally. kick ass in everything. Oh, yeah, no. What's one area where it's like, Lord, <laughs> help me out. Yeah. Like, I, I really suck. I'd say one of the biggest things I struggled with um, for a long time was being able to separate who I am as a person and who I am as an athlete. And I would find my worth as a person from what I did on the track. Um, wow. if, I, if I failed, quote, unquote, failed, like if I you know, fell on my face in a race in front of thousands of people, I, in my, you know, I had failed myself and the people who love me and I just, I didn't see, you know, I, I, I didn't understand, um, I couldn't understand like why that happened or anything. And I was like, I failed everyone. Like, who am I? Why would they, right. why would they care about me now? You know? And so, uh, I would say that was my biggest thing is trying to find myself worth and be happy within myself. Yeah. I had to find happiness through other people. I mean, I always had to be around people because I wasn't happy being alone. You know, sure. I had to go out and do things, whether that was maybe sometimes go out and party and like do things cause like just to get attention or sure. just to be around other people. And it's sad, but like that's, I wasn't, yeah, was I really real. struggled a lot. Yeah, it was okay. real. And I, it was something I was always ashamed of telling people. And now I'm at a point where I'm like, no, it's a huge part of me. And it's the reason why I am where I am today. Right. So. I love that. Now, obviously you're an inspiring figure, but like, who do you really think that you inspire? Like, is it just female track athletes? Is it like hurdlers? If, if you could come up with your own audience of like, man, if I could flick on the lights of like who I really do inspire, what would these people look like? I think it would be the youth, whether that is like high schoolers, middle schoolers, even younger, um, because I think a lot of things that they're going through are things that I've, I've been through, right, you know? And right. so um, mental struggles or fears of like, oh my gosh, like am I good enough or anything like that? I, I feel like I definitely, um, I feel like that would be my audience would be, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess high schoolers or just youth in general, yeah. Sure. So maybe somebody out there is like really crushing on you, <laughs> right? Uh, we ask all of our guests, what is your type? Yeah, that is a great question. I feel like, <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't know. Hold on, let's think. <laughs> I don't, okay, so I don't need someone. I feel like so many people are like, you're a professional athlete, you probably want to date another professional athlete. It's like, no, I just want someone who can understand that this life, you know, it, sometimes it can be, it's not for everyone. Right. And the fact that I travel a lot, um, 
I can be gone a lot. I can't always do certain like fun things, go on just yeah. random trips because I have to train. Right. Someone that just understands that and is patient with me yeah. and makes me laugh and um, I can just have fun with. Someone that's my best friend. That's my type. <laughs> All right, so we've gone down your whole career from the very start all the way up into the Olympics, talked about what you're going to do next. Like, there are people out there watching this that aspire to be you or track stars or just being able to run really fast. <laughs> I want to give those people three movements that you can't live without. They could be lifting movements, warm-up movements, does not matter. I need those today. <laughs> Well, I can show you better than I can tell you, so how about I show you some movements? Well, let's go. <laughs> All right, first drill on the list. To be a 400-meter hurdler, you need to know how to do A1 skips over the hurdles. Uh, what this is going to do is open up your hips and really, really, really focus on your trail leg. Q, you ready? Come on. Let's go. <laughs> All right, so look, you go first. I watch. I've never done this before. All right. But let's go. Let's go. Easy. <laughs> oh. So, that looked, that looked great for a first time. <laughs> One thing that is a common, common mistake is your arms. People just want to do everything with their arms. So you okay. want to continue to keep it in running form. So you're going to go over like this, come around and bring it around. See how this one comes back up? Back into the running position. Oh, I see. There you and go. what I'm doing is this. Yeah, okay, you're kind of just, it. you know, dancing. <laughs> let's do it again. Nice. All right, let's go. And make sure you bring that trail leg up to your armpit and all the way around, back into a running position. Yeah, I was okay? going to tell you to do the same thing. <laughs> Perfect. Nice. Look at those arms. Next drill, it's not going to be hurdles. Uh, we're going to do high knees, proper high knees with uh, full cycles. Okay, let's Ready? roll. Let's go. <laughs> Proper high knees. Yep. With what? Full cycle. Full so you want to make sure that you're coming up over the knee and down. And you don't want to lean back. <laughs> Everyone wants to do high knees like this. So you want to be up straight. All, all right? right? We'll run it the same way. Let me see you do it and then I'll do it. All right. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Hey, so look. And don't what worry I see, about speed. Yeah, what I see a lot of times in gyms is people do high knees and they just start kicking their feet up. Yeah. What I notice is you're coming through here. Cycling. Right? Yep. So that's what you mean by the full cycle. All right. Let's look see. Look at you. Quick learner. Ooh. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't even know. Here we go. Nope, 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 no, nope, nope. <laughs> do it again. Let me see. Okay. Remember that when this foot comes down, it's going to propel you up. Uh -huh. So you want to be underneath the foot. You're still kind of in back of the foot. I see, I see, so I underneath see. underneath it. All right, I go. have your foot underneath you. Ready? Uh-huh. I don't know. <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> so one thing is dor dorsal flexing your foot. Got it. You're kind of pointing because I know you want to get to the ground. Yeah. Like you're marching. Here we go. <laughs> so dorsal flex. There you go, just like that. All right. Ready? <laughs> oh, you're getting there, see? Much better. <laughs> <laughs> That's from walking on my toes, man. Okay, one last one for good measure. <laughs> I hate you. Okay, so the next thing might be a little more up your alley. Oh. We're gonna do power cleans. And the main thing for a sprinter is you wanna worry about ankle, knee, hip extension. So um, sometimes it looks cool when you're just like kind of not even, you know, just like kind of stomping the ground. But if you're not getting that ankle, knee, hip extension, not really getting what we want out of it. So, so you're saying we don't have to do any of this running or hurdle stuff? None of that. He's breathing kind of heavy, so. Come on. <laughs> I'm ready. Notice she's grabbing the tens. I'm grabbing the forty-five. So, okay. It's my off day. Okay, oh. I can power clean hundred and eighty-five pounds. My name is Georgia, okay, and I so can skip. You just shut your my mouth name is there. Jefferson, I can lift some work. Oh, here's the other. Two. You looking for the two and a half, Georgia? <laughs> huh? You know what my coach taught me? You never want to do a lifting session without a proper warm up. I haven't properly warmed up. That's why so she's doing So we're gonna Olympics. use this as our warm up. <laughs> All right. What are we looking for from you right now? What should we see in you? 
like high hip extension? Like what are the things that yeah, we should yeah. see so you doing Yeah, so what right I'm going to focus on is when I come up and I lift the bar, I'm just going to think quick. I want it to get off the ground fast, get ankle knee hip extension, get underneath it, bring it up. Yeah. Ready? You do five. I go first? Yeah, yeah. Ladies first, man. Go. Activate the core. On my heels. Oh, that's really light. <laughs> Good. Beautiful. Now your turn. Um, since we are talking about a movement that I do know a lot about, I want to show you guys something that she does really well. At the top of a power clean pool, a lot of people are teaching you to raise up on your toes. You'll find that she actually comes through the toes, but then goes right back into that dorsi flexion of the foot, right? So you're actually pressing through your heels and landing like that, rather than seeing a lot of people go in just their toes. My turn. <laughs> your turn. Five of them. Peasy. <laughs> All right, that's our show for today. Thank you so much to Georgian for coming on. I really believe that you're going to inspire a lot of people out there, and then you just gave them practical things to kind of get to the next level. Yeah. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. So we promise to just keep bringing the best guests that we can find and just giving you the best content. So to keep following this, please like, subscribe this YouTube channel, and then just share with your friends. Have a great day.